elephant. Yes, a new liturgical season. Ah. Good morning. I'm Pastor Laura Gentry and this is Fuji. It's the start of a brand new liturgical year. It's the first Sunday of Advent and we're so glad you joined us for worship. We hope you'll enjoy. Blessed be the Trinity, one God who creates redeems and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare to receive Christ by turning from sin and seeking God's tender mercy and compassion. To you, O oh God, all hearts are open. To you, all desires are known. We come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us of your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen. The advent of Christ, the dawn from on high, breaks upon us with light and healing. Through Jesus, our Savior, God looks with favor upon you and forgives you all your sins. Amen. Of justice. 
For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hi there, how are you, Arthur? Wonderful. Well, this is our Advent wreath here. Have you seen an Advent wreath before? Today you get to make your very own one out of little candles, but this is our big church candles. And we have, can you count the colorful, like let's not count this white one, but how many other candles have we got? Four. 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 And I know that two plus two is four. Two plus, yes, so these two plus these two equals four. Now these are our countdown. Do you know how far away Christmas is? Four weeks. Four weeks, and so today, we're going to light our first candle. So can you go ahead and light this candle? And Zoe is our wonderful candle lighter here. Okay, so this candle means one Sunday is down and three more Sundays, and then we'll light this on Christmas Eve. So it's our countdown. But it also, we try to think about something on each week, and today there's something we think about, and it's hope. Do you know what hope is? What is hope? You can say, like, I hope that we have Christmas before Easter. Exactly. Uh, we, I hope that we have Christmas before Easter. Exactly. Another thing. I hope we'll have, what do you like to have for dinner? Do you like pizza? I hope we'll have bagels for dinner. Oh, we have bagels for dinner. Okay, take note. I hope we have that for dinner. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of things we hope for. But here together in the church, we hope for God's love to be everywhere so that everyone is kind and everybody has what they need. And that's what we pray for. So we hold on to hope even though it's not here yet. We hope it's going to happen and we do our part to make it happen. So let's say a prayer and then we're going to sing our candle song for hope, okay? So let's, let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, in just four more weeks, Christmas will be here. And so today we focus on getting our hearts ready with hope. Help us to hope for your coming, for goodness and love and justice to reign everywhere. And help us to do our part to be kind and loving and make that happen. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Now we're going to sing a song. Do you want to stay up here for the song? We're going to teach you this song. to God. God acts righteously both in punishing Israel for its sin and in having mercy. In today's reading, Jerusalem's future name, the Lord is our righteousness, proclaims that God is even now working salvation for Israel. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Here ends the first reading. <laughs> Psalm 25, and we'll read this responsively. I'll start. 
start with the first verse, and then the congregation can respond. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let no one who looks to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show, Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are righteous and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimony. Friends, Psalm 25 is a fairly intense prayer of surrender. God, to you I lift up my soul, it begins. Or a better translation, according to the Hebrew word for soul there, is nephesh. Better translation would be life. Like I lift up my whole life. I open my whole life to you. And the psalmist says, God, please forgive me, guide me, teach me, lead me. I am so ready. <sighs> to have my life be totally open to your presence. Today our song is called To You. And I want to teach you this refrain. To you, I lift up my soul. To you, I open my life. I give my trust. I give my hope to you. Try that with me real soft. To you, I lift up my soul. To you, I open my life. I give my trust. I give my hope to you. Yeah, I've got a couple verses here. Teach me the way of holiness. My eyes are ever on you. Teach me the way of honesty. My eyes are ever on you. Together. To you, I lift up my soul. To you, I open my life. I give my trust. I give my hope. to you to embody this prayer so for example 
What do your hands want to do when we sing the words, to you I lift up my soul? Let's try, let's try something. Nobody's watching. To you I lift my soul. Yeah. And what does your uh, body want to do with the next line? To you I open my life. Let's try something. To you I open my life. Yeah. And then it goes, I give my trust and I give my hope to you. What's that look like? I give my trust, I give my hope to you. Let's try this refrain with hands, and you can sing too if you want. To you, I lift up my soul to you. I open my life, I give my trust, I give my hope to you, to you. I lift up my soul to you. I open my life, I give my trust, I give my hope. Sing to you with me. To you. One more time. To you. The second reading is in 1 Thessalonians. Upon Timothy's report from the congregation at Thessalonia, Paul is exuberant with gratitude for them. In this passage from his letter, Paul voices overflowing thanks, joy, and blessings for the people of this growing church. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see your face, may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Here ends the lesson. Please stand. today comes from St. Luke, the 22nd chapter. God will fulfill God's purposes and already hidden signs of that fulfillment abound. On that great day there will be dismay, perplexity, confusion, and terror, but God's people shall be given strength to stand boldly and receive God's promised redemption. Jesus said there will be Signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among the nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. 
Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly, like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Thanksgiving is over. I hope you had a happy one. And Christmas is upon us. Are you ready? Is your house all decorated? Do you have your tree up? Are you one of those people who gets your tree up in mid-October? Do you have all your shopping done, all your Christmas cards sent out? Or are you getting nervous that I'm even asking you these questions? And you should say to me, uh, it's not even December yet. <laughs> and still, you know what I mean. As soon as Thanksgiving's over, it seems to be a mad rush every year for most people getting ready for Christmas. It's just such a busy time. And yet here in the church, we pause amidst all that flurry of activity to breathe and to try to get ready for Christmas a little differently than everybody else. To put our hearts and our minds on what really matters about the Christmas season. And so we have our Advent wreath where we count down as I explained to the children. We mark time on this wreath each week reminding us by the growing light that we're drawing closer to Christmas. And each candle having a theme, today we lit the candle of hope. Hope, it turns out, is good for you. I read some studies in psychology today, for example, that pointed out that being hopeful is good for your health, it can boost your immune system, and it can lower levels of anxiety and depression, and it can even decrease pain. So, that's great, right? But you're saying, well, how do I hope, though? It's one thing to know that hope is good for you, but, you know, if you can't hope, you don't want to just paste on a smile and be inauthentic. You don't want to force yourself to have some kind of irrational positivity. You might be saying, hey, do you read the news? It's not an easy time to hope. Fear is so much easier. Fear is easier. We can grab onto fear. We live in fearful times. Of course, there are the big three. The three things people are most afraid of. Do you know what they are? Public speaking, heights, and bugs. But beyond those things, I think we are in a time right now where we fear our division. You know, we see so many people angry and aggressive at one another. I saw some statistic, even at Thanksgiving, many families <coughs> did not gather because of political differences. We wonder, can we hold our families together? Can we hold our communities together, our country, our world? Do we have a reason to hope for the future? Sometimes we wonder. And so we lit the candle of hope, but did we really mean it? How can we hope? Well, our scripture lessons for today, as all of them do throughout the season of Advent, try to help us do that, to wrap our minds around how can we get ready for Christ's coming, particularly today, how can we hope? Now, in ancient times, a sign of hope was the fig tree, the fruitfulness of the fig tree. Fig trees are there at the very beginning of the Bible. You know, Adam and Eve, when they realize for the first time that they're naked because they've eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what do they do? They cover themselves with fig leaves. Let's hope they were nice big leaves. Other fun facts about fig trees. Fig trees can live hundreds of years, and they are some of the oldest living things on our planet. Ancient rabbis in the desert climate would sit under the shade of a fig tree and would study Torah. And so the trees themselves came to be associated with wisdom, like seeking God's wisdom and understanding and having a place of peace. And fig trees, the fruitfulness of them, 
is often symbolic of blessing and prosperity. The prophets of old often talk about grapes and figs, both of which they're hoping for the fruit. They're hoping that the, the fruit will come to fruition. Also, the prophets talk about when there are enemies coming, the symbolism is that they will cut down our fig trees. That would be the worst thing. So fig trees. Jesus speaks of them three times in this short gospel reading that we had for today. What's he getting at? Each time, he's stressing the importance of being patient with that fig tree. In another place in Luke 13, Jesus tells a parable of a man who is sick of his fig tree because he planted it three years ago and it hasn't done anything, no fruit at all. And so he threatens to cut it down. Eventually, he's persuaded to be patient with the tree, give it some more fertilizer, give it another chance before he cuts it down. And the point of that story, Jesus is telling us, God is patient with us. We're often like those fig trees, wasting soil, got everything we need, but we still haven't been bearing good fruit. But God's patient with us, a second chance. Okay, so in today's story, we know that God is patient with us, but this one encourages us to be patient with God. I hate that, don't you? My prayer is always, Lord, give me patience, and I want it right now. <laughs> it is so hard to be patient. Patience may not be your nature, but guess what? God says, you gotta be patient anyway. You have to be patient. The peace that we long for in our hearts and in our world is not a weekend project. It is not a quick fix turning the ship around to go God's way, to be filled with God's righteousness and love is a long project. And God's working on it. But we have to do our part too of being patient with God, being able to trust that our redemption is drawing near. And so Jesus says, look at the fig trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you know for yourselves that the kingdom of God is near. So okay, the whole thing hasn't happened yet. But where are their buds? Where are the buds of righteousness and love and God's kingdom drawing near? Can we see it and trust that even though it's not quite here, there is a fair reason to hope? Well, let me point out two interesting words of advice that Jesus gives us so that even though it's not easy, even though we're impatient, we can be hopeful in tough times. He says that in the end times, times are coming when people will faint with fear for what is coming upon the world. In these times, Jesus promises to be with us. So he says, when you see these things taking place, stand up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Ex excuse me, stand up, raise your heads when trouble is coming? Well, that's the last thing we would expect Jesus to say, right? When trouble is coming, what's your instinct? Duck and cover, right? Hunker down, protect yourself against the dangers out there in the world. And yet, in this counterintuitive twist of events, Jesus says, when things get bad, you get up, you stand up, and you lift your head. Always reminds me of Charlie Brown. You know, Charlie Brown always stands kind of like this. And one time his friends asked him, Charlie, how come you always stand hunched over like that? He says, me, like this? He goes, well, this is my depressed stance. When you're depressed, it makes a lot of difference how you stand. The worst thing you can do is straighten up and hold your head high because then you would start to feel better. And if you're gonna get any joy out of being depressed, you have to stand like this. And scientists have long associated the mind and the body. That standing like Charlie Brown does indeed, maybe it's how you want to stand, but it does indeed make you feel worse. When things aren't going well, we don't want to raise our heads. It seems unsafe. And yet Jesus surprises us and tells us to do it anyway. Things are bad, everyone else is fainting with fear, and you don't have to be afraid. You can trust God. You can hope for real. You can stand up, raise your head, and look for God's coming into the world. 
And I know, friends, these are hunching times. We want to hunch with Charlie and brace ourselves for all the horrors that are to come. But Jesus says, don't. Don't do that. And on top of that, he says, don't numb yourself to your fears either. Don't get weighed down with wine and worry or anything else that would, you know, be an addictive substance or behavior that would sort of numb you or anesthetize you to the pain of your life, the pain of the world. Don't do that. Be awake, pay attention, and don't worry. Don't take these horrible thoughts and ruminate around in your head that make, you know, at three o'clock in the morning, suddenly your problems get worse. <coughs> Jesus says, not a good idea. <coughs> don't worry, don't numb your pain, light the candle of hope. So we say no, no to the sadness around us, no to the hopelessness and addiction and worry, no to all of those things. We could go down that road, it seems to make a lot of sense, a lot of people are, but we follow Christ. He says, don't go down that road, there's another road. But you gotta be patient. It's not an easy road, it's a road that you walk with me and you look for signs of hope. And so, though God's kingdom is not yet here, we are looking at it as if you are looking at a fig tree with little tiny buds. There is hope if you hold up your head, if you pay attention, if you look for signs of hope. Where can we see signs of hope? Not in some distant future when Christ comes again, but right now, right in our own lives. Remember a few years ago, my friend Carla flew in to visit from Arizona, and I was feeling really sad at the time, really difficult circumstances, and when she left, I suddenly realized, I said, wow, you're like medicine. I feel completely different after just 24 hours with you in my home. That's what really clicked for me. Just by being friends, just by being a kind person and, and listening carefully and being with someone, even if you can't solve all their problems, just being with them is medicine. It's hope. I bet you see this too in your friends. There's times when people care for you and you just think, what did I do to deserve such an awesome friend? And they're like medicine, they're like a balm to heal you. Sometimes we even see this kind of thing among strangers. I think that's the most exciting of all. We, we always love a good Samaritan story in the news because when a stranger can help someone else, they can cross cultural or um, social, any kind of barriers, break through and say, hey, I'm human, you're human, I can love you, I can help you. That, woo, that is a sign of hope. At the Oneota Film Festival, we just saw a wonderful film that features the Archbishop Desmond Tutu from South Africa um, in conversation with the Dalai Lama. And Desmond Tutu was talking about the nature of humans. And he got on this tangent where he was talking about Doctors Without Borders. He said, these people, they go into dangerous places. They go into war zones with very little equipment, very little staff. They're not getting paid, and they risk their lives to save people. He goes, that, that is who we are. Not just the doctors with borders, but all of us. We are those good people, and our nature is to care. Our nature is to push through boundaries and love one another. That's a sign of hope. So as we try to really embrace the candle of hope, this Advent, I give you a challenge. Look around in your life for signs of hope among the people you love and know, the people you don't know, maybe even people you consider enemies. Where are you seeing an open-heartedness, a kindness, a love, a goodness that you didn't expect? That's hope. That means Christ is coming right here, right now. There is hope. But we have to stand up, lift our heads, and look for it. Have this wakefulness that this whole season is about. And if you're really good at that challenge, and you would like a secondary challenge, as I know many of you are quite high achievers, here it is. Can you not just look for signs of hope? Can you be a sign of hope? Can you be that friend who goes to visit someone in a terrible time and listens and loves and sighs with them? 
Can you be that person who maybe reaches out to a stranger or donates money to a cause or finds ways to build bridges so that there is hope for the future? I think you can do it. So that's what this season is about. Jesus reminds us that our journey is difficult. The road of turning the world around is a long and dangerous one. But it's happening. It's happening right now. And there are signs of hope all around us. So this season, let's focus our attention a little bit harder on where we can see that hope in our world. And moreover, where we can bear the good fruits like a fig tree. And we can be the signs of hope. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the cross of God, was crucified and died in his grave. He descended to death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us take time to share that peace with one another.
the Holy Three, the Holy One. Increase your hope, expand your joy, and deepen your love, and grant you peace as you await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.